Hello, beautiful creatives. This is what my desk looks like as I start today's video. And yep, it's kind of a mess. There's all kinds of things laid out here because today is going to be a play day. And what I'm going to be playing with is the palette. Now I had a video and I'll, I'll post the link up here. I had done a video where I had swatched out the Chow Mei, um, tubed paints and that was these swatches and you can go watch that video these are the same colors in the palette so i'm not going to swatch these again but i am going to play with them and just show you one point that i should mention before i forget is if you get this palette and i'm doing a giveaway on this palette on patreon i'll talk about that in a minute but if you get this palette the beauty of this is you can refill these half pans um, from the tubes it's the same colors so you can actually fill and refill these these are large tubes so I absolutely love this palette. I have taken it outside and painted with it. Um, if you follow me, oh, actually, I, I think I put it on YouTube. I know I put it on Instagram and Facebook. I did a, um, a reel where I took this out and painted in the rain. Anyways, lots of fun. I'm just going to play today. I've got all kinds of stuff out that I'm going to experiment with this paint with. I may use some from the tubes. I may use some from the palette, but we are just going to have a super fun play day and talk about these Chow Mei watercolors from Paul Rubens. Okay, so since the paint colors are the same in this set as they are in the tube set, I'm not going to swatch these out again, but I just thought I would show you um, the swatches to refresh your memory. And like I said, if you want to see, watch that swatching video, you can click the link above. So I just talked, I just officially announced the giveaway of this set of the Chow Mei um, watercolors. And in the last video that I did where I swatched them out, I did a deep dive on this palette and all the parts. And I, I guess I'll show that again quickly in this video but I really love this palette for taking outside for a couple of reasons. This is the painting that I did outside in the rain with that little palette. This was so much fun to do. And then when it dried, it was soaking wet. This is the Paul Rubens, the little tiny Paul Rubens sketchbook that they gave me. And when it dried, when I came in, I went over it with some um, colored pencils but um, this sketchbook took such a beating. It really was soaking, soaking wet. Anyways, this was another painting that I did of trees with this little palette. This is the, the, what I painted yesterday on the giveaway announcement on my Patreon video. So I actually painted this while I talked, but the official Chow Mei giveaway video, and if you want to see that, the link to my Patreon is always below the videos in the description area. All you have to do is click more and uh, it'll drop down the description with all of the links of everything I talk about in the video and my social media links. But the video is open to the te to $10 level patrons, um, both in the US and in Canada. If you're interested, all you need to do is go to my Patreon and put it in, be a $10 member. If you're a $10 member, you just need to put your name in the comments below that video, the Chow Mei announcement, giveaway announcement video. The winner will be drawn on February 5th and um, good luck. Yeah, so if you're interested in, in joining my patron for a month or two months or however long, as long as you're a $10 member, you can enter into the um, giveaway and I will be sending this out to some lucky winner in the United States or Canada. Just remember, you need to comment on that video in Patreon. Don't comment on it on YouTube because the winner will be picked from the comments within Patreon um, on that specific Chow Mei giveaway video. So, okay. One other thing I talked about um, in the giveaway video on Patreon is that I love to draw with watercolors. One of my favorite thing to do 
is to not draw with a pencil, which always tightens me up, and to just go right in with a brush. I usually use something like one of these Princeton. I, I like these a lot for drawing because they've got a good spring to them. So this is the Princeton Aqua Elite number six. And I just go in with, you know, my watercolor palette and my paints and just draw. And I can stay so much looser that way. What I did in this specific drawing, this was done the same way. I just had the paper a lot wetter and I used a mop brush. This mop brush that Paul Rubens gave me is what I used to do this one because this holds a lot of water. And I'm going to keep that out because I may use that today. But what I sometimes do if I'm unsure of myself is I'll go in with a really light color, like um, a yellow ochre or something. You know, sometimes yellow is a little too saturated. I'll go with more of an earth tone yellow or a gamboge or something, and I'll draw it out. And then I can go over it with like a Payne's gray or something darker and sort of correct my mistakes. And then I'll just paint it in. I love how loose I'm able to stay when I do that kind of um, draw, uh, painting, well, drawing with a paintbrush. This was the same little area outside that I painted before where the water was, it was raining so hard for a few days, it was making like a little rivulet. And I did the same thing. I just went out with my brush and this palette and just painted, just, um, you know, didn't draw anything in. I did go in afterwards with colored pencil. This was the same kind of thing. No pencil drawing. Um, I think that's it for in here. There are other paintings in here, but there are acrylics. And in this one, there's a couple. These are the same sort of thing, just drawing with a paintbrush. I love the little blooms that you got in there. It's just a different way of rendering a subject, and it's so much fun, you know? I love that dog. This was a master copy, um, yeah. Anyways, a lot of fun for me, and a good way to stay loose is to just do your drawings with a brush with a watercolor. So that's sort of a, so I apologize to my patrons, that's sort of a repeat for them, but we are going to play with watercolors today and push them to their very limits. I'm going to take this Canson Montavo, is it? Mont Montval? Uh, watercolor pad. It is, what's the weight on this paper? 140 pounds. It is 5.5 by 8.5 inches. And we are just going to play on this watercolor paper and push some watercolor around and see, see what it does. I'm going to use different kinds of brushes. I have a few different brushes there. I have a lot of watercolor brushes. So we'll just pick and pull at things and see what it, how it acts with the different brushes. This is a favorite brush. This is from um, Cheap Joe's, I think. It's called Scroggy's Loose Goose, and this thing makes some crazy marks. That's fun. So we'll use that. And right now, I think what I'm going to do is just put some water on this paper. Just kind of get it wet and see where it goes. Now, a nice thing about this is I showed in my last video that you can remove this mixing palette with this tool. And I think everybody knows this by now. Pop that out and put it right next to your, and it's got the color. This was the sticker that went over the top. All of this information is in the, the last video. You can also pop this lid off, which I think I'm actually gonna do because I want, um, I wanna have the watercolors right next to me, my, the palette. Let me get this out of the way. This pops right off. So I'm gonna put that to the side and take this and this and start with that. I may even put this one up here. First, let's just see how some of these colors move and um, when you lay them on the wet. 
I'd like to mix up a purple. That makes a really vibrant purple. Let's see, do I have water here? I don't have water there. I'm liking the way the it's uh, spidering out, the way it's sort of moving. I love this burnt sienna. Now this is the dry, so how does this move, laying it down on the dry? This is the Chinese white, happens when I blend that in with that. Chinese white is a mixing white, so it's not an opaque white. I like how this is, these lines are bleeding into that with the yellow. What if I try putting down the mixing white and then a tiny bit of this purple or even better, like what about a blue, a cerulean blue on the mixing white? I love how that blurred out like that. These edges, that edge was starting to dry there and it softened up really nicely. Probably should have put a clamp on this. This paper is curling quite a bit as I get it wet. I'm also going to grab uh, some of that Paul Rubens paper. Okay, while this dries, I'll put this aside. My desk is so packed with stuff. But while that dries, I'm liking, really liking how this paint is moving so far. So we'll let that dry. It'll lighten up a lot as it dries. I'm going to take out one of these pieces of paper and this is the Paul Rubens hot pressed 50% cotton. So this is going to be smooth. Um, do I want smooth? I was thinking I wanted texture. Well, we'll try. We'll see what happens on this. I actually was um, going to uh, tape a piece of paper to a board and do a painting, an actual painting with this, but um, 
I have to have a bunch of uh, lab work done. It's unusual lab work. It's not anything that normal labs run. So I have to travel a little bit for that. And, and I also have to go off all of my medication for a week before I could have that test done. So all of the mast cell medication. So what that means is I am probably going to end up very sick towards the end of the week when this video should come out. So I thought I had better jump on it. Today's only Tuesday, but if I was going to get a video for you guys um, this week, I knew I would have to do it early in the week. I, I just stopped my medication today. So... I'm going to tip this a little bit and let those um, beads form on the bottom of this. This is a lot of water that this brush holds. It's a really nice brush. Let those beads form down. What colors haven't I tried? Let's try some of the reds. Drop that right into there. Make a really lovely orange. Actually, maybe we'll keep going with that. Put some more of that red there. Make a violet. This is some cerulean. Ooh, so the cerulean and what's this the third red in is called purple lake that makes a pretty color let me see what the purple lake looks like plain oh yeah that's a vibrant color now I'm going to take my Princeton brush this is a Princeton Neptune. Uh, do I want to do the Neptune? The Neptune holds more water than the Aqua Elite. So let's try a really dark wash of, I think this is Van Dyke Brown or Raw Umber. Van Dyke Brown, I think this one is. So we'll try a really heavy application. of that and then I'm going to take see which ones of these are still wet so these are so wet that when I put the mark put the sharp edge through the water is pooling the pigment and water are pooling down into the groove and making it um, a dark line Let's try a sponge. The sponge is really, really, really dry. It removes really well off of this paper. Wow. How about with paper towel oh yeah wow it does remove well now this is in some areas it's dry enough to get a white scratch and some areas are still wet 
so it's pooling down. You got to let it, it's kind of a magic spot that you got to let it get to. It also might not have been applied thick enough. You really want a juicy application. Well, maybe juicy isn't the right word. You want a dry, kind of a dry application for that. Now, there's a lot of water in there. Maybe I should try this brush. That's drier. That's a good example of how you can get like some trees scratched in. Do I have, um, I'd like something narrower. This is a really great way to make rocks is to put down some pigment and then scratch into it. Let's try this. I haven't done this in a long time, so I don't know if I'll be able to make it work. I don't think that was dry enough. Like I said, I haven't done this in a long time, so we'll see how this works. I don't know if you can tell from there, but you can sort of make it look like rocks with a shadowing. It's a really fun technique to play with. Really great way to scratch in trees and branches. Okay, now what if we try to take a stiffer brush and remove some pigment? I've kind of scratched that down a lot, so. Oh yeah, wow, it does remove really well. So you could get sunbeams that way. In a forest like. Wow. God light we used to call it when we were kids. Wow, it removes really well off this paper. That can change depending on what kind of paper you use. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna put down a real washy layer of um, ultramarine. Let's throw some cerulean in there too. I'm really liking the way the pigment is moving around as I'm dropping more color in there. 
and I love the way this ultramarine blue is granulating. I don't know if that's showing. You just grab these little puddles at the end and make them come down. Try taking a piece of Kleenex. Just kind of roll it around in there, make some cloud shapes. And you know, if you have both the tubes and the pan set, you really don't have to get too worried about um, using up your paint because you'll have so much. Yeah, that's pretty. Let's try doing it with um, plastic wrap. Let's try to put some of this pretty reddish color in here. Take some plastic wrap, munch it up. This is, if you let it dry a little more, I'm kind of pushing this to try to get more done in a short time. It makes great marks that way, especially for doing in water or like um, leaves on a forest floor. And if I waited a little till this dried a little longer, it would make a nice mark in there. It's just filling back in because it's a little wet. But that's a fun way to make marks. Then you can go back in on something like this and kind of put it down and do it with a few different colors so that it looks like um, leaves on the forest floor. Like it would be nice to do that with that green color. I don't know if I have enough of it mixed up. Mixing a muted green with that burnt sienna and that sap green. I don't know if I'll be able to get this in there enough. That gives it some texture. If this was a forest, you could even do it to represent some leaves on the trees. And then this is drying up a bit. So let's take a dropper with some alcohol. Pop a drop of alcohol on there. It pushes the pigment out, which is really fun. And now with all, between all of this that we've done on this spot, This is getting some really pretty textures in here. I hope it's showing on the camera because it's, it's got a really gorgeous mottled look in there. Haven't taken this kind of sponge. What colors haven't we tried? We haven't really tried this red. I think this is Cad Red Hue Pale.
just pick up some of the watercolor and then pop it around with the sponge. You can actually paint with a sponge. Remove paint. Apply it somewhere else. See how this red is usually a really staining color. Let's see how. Ooh, it does remove. Wow. That kind of surprised me. Wow, it removed really nicely from there. One other thing we could do is see how it does with salt. Let me see if this, uh, oh yeah, it does. It is still wet enough. Oh, wow. And then it put it back into where the area was removed. That's interesting. That's kind of fun. Let's put a big puddle of indigo there. Like right in the middle here. I have no idea if this is going to work. I've used this indigo a lot. There's a big dip in there. Now let's try some salt on there. See what happens. I'll have to set that one aside. This one is probably dry enough to do something on the back. I think what I might do is go back in on this one a little bit and pull some of these trees towards the front. Oh, you know what would be fun for this? I'm going to mix up a puddle of paint. So I'm going to take some brown. Some of that um, purple lake it was called. And some ultramarine blue to make a purple. Just a few different colors. And I'm going to take this Scroggy's Loose Goose brush. This brush is so much fun. And I'm going to dip it into here. You ha just have no control with this brush, so it's great for making branches and roots. probably good to pre-mix your colors um, with a different brush because it's hard to jab this in there to get um, to get a good brush load of pigment. Just keep making lines in here to make it look sort of like bark on trees. And that orangey burnt sienna coming through in the back is really nice. Let it lighten up as you move towards the back to look 
look like trees that are further in the distance. Just sort of keeping the same colors in all of these mixes, alternating between like a, a burnt umber, raw sienna, that purple lake, and ultramarine blue. And that way they'll all feel related throughout the painting. Okay, and then I'm going to take um, this sponge, or do I want to try the plastic wrap again? I think I'm going to try it a little bit with a sponge. I'm going to try to mix up some more green of that muted green. Put some raw sienna in there. Or, I'm sorry, burnt sienna. Some of this sap green. I think that's sap green. Yes, yeah, sap green. And then I'm going to try to put this sponge in there and just gently tap on some leaf textures. A lot of these techniques would be easier to do with the tubes of paint. It'd be a little easier to mix up a big puddle of the paint if you had the tubes. I'm going to try to go with a darker green in this this time. And add a darker brown to muddy it up. I could add red to that too to muddy it up a little. Okay, so let's go with this real dark one and bring the leaves forward. It'll make the other leaves look like they're standing out in the back and it'll make these look like they're coming forward. Try one more layer of that. I should let this dry before I do more of that because they're just going to start to run together. Then you can come down with a dry brush and kind of make some marks along here. Make sure I'm in. I've been out of the camera range a couple of times. This would work a little better on cold pressed paper rather than hot. This hot pressed paper doesn't have the ridges to grab the paint really.
Okay, one more with a little bit of green. This time I'll put in a little bit of red into that. Let's see how that changes it. A little bit of red, a little bit of brown. Get it to a more realistic earth tone color instead of that vibrant, vibrant bluish color. And then dip my sponge in. And pop some of that on. I'm not really getting a big enough puddle to make a dramatic mark, but you get the idea of what can be done with these watercolors. Kind of fun. Love this, uh, where'd it go? The Scrogi's Loose Goose Brush cannot be beat for making branches. Let's take some of this green that's left. There's not much left, but we can even just make some marks. Oh, and how did this work with the salt? Uh, it's not dry. I'll have to pop the camera back on after um, afterwards and show you how that worked. Here's the salt effect after it was dry. It's such a stunning effect and the bottom colors show through where the salt has lifted the pigment. It's really beautiful effect to use in paintings. It can be overdone, but it's lovely. If you can see how it mixed things. There's some fun with the Chow Mei palette of watercolors. And I, I've shown you enough paintings, I think, that I did with them over the last few weeks that I can say I really, really enjoy working with these for a student grade. Um, economically priced paint. I really enjoyed working with these and I'm looking forward to doing more work with them. And I just think, I really do think the palette design is, is so much fun. Where this all just sort of packs together and uh, becomes such a compact little unit or you can take it apart and I really enjoy using it this way where you can have your paints and your mixing, you know, right at hand. Very, very nice, very easy to work with. All right, you know, this, this video went by so fast, there was more things that I was hoping to play around with, but that just means I'll have to do another video for you guys. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in entering the giveaway for one of these gorgeous little palettes, then um, hop on over to my Patreon. If you're already a member on the $10 level, just look for the video that that is titled giveaway um, and comment underneath with your name. Be sure to write your, na your full name because uh, that's what's going to be entered. If you're not a member, go, head on over and join for $10 and you'll... Um, You'll get a, a palette of paint that's worth, I think this is 30 something now, 29, 30. I should have looked that up, but um, it's a really good value. I really, really enjoy these paints. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.